How is your walk? Good. Thanks. So do you want some breakfast? No, thanks. This will be fine. Okay. Well, I guess I'll take a walk. You don't have to. No, that's okay. Really. So, is there anything for me to look out for outside? Such as? Such as bears or rattlesnakes. You're joking, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I've never been outside of this cabin alone. Well, you won't be taking your life in your own hands, that's for sure. Well, good. That's all I need to know. Hey. You really don't have to. Ridge, we came up here so that you could sort things out. Now, I don't want to get underfoot. You're terrific, you know that. You must be uh, terribly confused and curious. I'll survive. I'm very confused. More than I've ever been in my life. It's good that you're here with me. Is it? Believe it or not, you've kept me sane this last 24 hours. Well, I've hardly said a thing. Just you being here with me. Well, I've wondered about that. Why? Because if I'm part of the problem... You're not part of the problem. You're not part of this... So it has nothing to do with me at all? No. Then it's not our relationship? That's not why you're so preoccupied? Brooke, this has nothing to do with us. This all has to do with my brother. Stephanie. Good morning. You look like you're waiting for someone. For you and your husband. Well, Thorne left very early this morning. He left? Yeah, he went to the office. Oh. Why? What did you think I meant? I wasn't sure. I understand that you went to see an attorney yesterday. Yes, I did. To file for divorce. Right again, Stephanie. What games are we playing here? Stephanie, I am not playing any games. And if you want information from me, then just ask me directly. All right. What are your plans concerning your marriage with Thorne? Well, it's about time. Morning, Mick. How are you? I'm swell. <laughs> well, come on in. Take a seat. Would you like some coffee? Are you having some? What's the matter? You afraid I'm going to lace it with cyanide, huh? Oh, I'm sure it's crossed your mind. Oh, now, Mick, you know I'm not a violent sort of person by nature. I'm very reasonable. So are you. So take a seat. We'll have some coffee. And we'll have a little chat. OK? The Beautiful, 
This portion sponsored by Planters. There's a whole lot of nothing going on. Planters. see it in the daylight. Oh, that's dazzling. Can you look at it? <laughs> it is so beautiful. Yeah. I had my eyes on that ring for so long, I didn't know if I'd be able to afford to buy it. It's too bad it had to be Sally Spectre who helped you afford it. You're not upset about that, are you? Clark, it's not that I'm ungrateful. I think this ring is fabulous. And it's so sweet of you to do this for me. It's just that I'm never going to feel completely comfortable with you working at Spectre Fashions. Especially when my family doesn't know anything about it. Kristen, I would love to tell your family. But you and I know I can't. <laughs> Heck, Ridge would put a contract out on me and your dad would probably help pay for it. Let's talk about something else. Okay. Amen. It's a real beauty, isn't it? How much did Mick Savage charge you for that? What do you think? I'm afraid to ask. Nothing. He gave it to me. Why? I guess he wanted me to have it. Well, didn't you question him why he wanted you to have it? Why should I? What's your relationship with him, anyway? I've admired Mick Savage ever since I first saw his work. He's an artist in every sense of the word. I'd really like you to meet him, Kristen. There you go, Mick. So, how's work going? Work is work. You'll like the results when you see them. I'm sure that I will. And I'm sure that's not the reason why you wanted to see me. To talk about work. As a matter of fact, it was. Do you remember when I first hired you, you were always talking about how much you preferred to work out in New York City? And you insisted that I shoot in L.A. You wanted that California look. Well, I've been thinking a lot about that, and I think maybe you were right. The California look is a little passe. Everybody's doing it. Interesting. What? Because I've come around to your original point of view. Now, there's a reason why the cow looks so hot. It's comfortable. And that's what fashion's really all about, isn't it? Creature comfort. Yeah, but that's something you can simulate almost anywhere. I mean, you can simulate that in your studio in New York City, and there you'd be around your friends instead of hanging out here with all of us flakes. Funny thing about that. I'm becoming kind of flaky myself. Yeah, I'm starting to fit right in here. I love L.A. <laughs> Very funny. You're quite a card, aren't you, Mick? It's okay, I can take a joke. I got a couple up my sleeve. As a matter of fact, I got an airplane ticket right here, first class for New York City. For you. It's leaving this afternoon. You can finish up your work for me there. I can arrange to have our model, Donna, flown out for the shoot, huh? Hey, hey hold on a second. I've also got a check in this envelope. Very substantial check. A payoff? Let's just call it moving expenses. Well, I'm not moving anywhere, Sally. I'm staying right here. 
Let's get down to the nitty gritty, okay? It's Macy. You want her out of my life, and you're willing to pay me to make that happen. Your brother? That's what's bothering you? Yes. Something that your parents told you about him. Something so totally unexpected. I still have trouble believing it. And even if I do, my God, how do I react? How do I accept it? And then when I think about what they want me to do, You want to introduce me to Mick Savage? Yeah. You'd love him. He's just like me. He's got so much style, doesn't give a damn what anybody thinks. And he does his own thing, does it better than anybody else can. Sounds like you should be president of his fan club. Uh, actually, I'd like to invite him over sometime, sit down, have a few brews, talk about creative aesthetics. Really? Yeah. You know, there's not that much difference between what he does and what I do. Clark, how did you meet this man? Well, first of all, he doesn't know me as Clark Garrison. He knows me as Beau Rivage. Really? <laughs> yeah, and that has to change. I value his friendship too much. Friendship? Yes. Wouldn't that be something? To have Mick Savage as a friend. So how did you meet him? Well, we bumped into each other one night, and then he called me later on at work and invited me over to see some of his photos. He's got a whole collection of these beauties. He called you at work and doesn't know you're really Clark Garrison? Well, his secretary gave him the number. He didn't know it was a Forrester number, and even if he did, he wouldn't know I'm not Beau Ravage. So where did he show you these photographs? Hmm. At his hotel. Hmm, where is he staying? At the Belvedere. It's very simple. He's not high gloss. He's actually very genuine. Hmm. Right. Anyway, time to go to work. Want to come join me in the shower? Mm, you go ahead. I'll wait for the coffee. I do want you out of my daughter's life, and I am willing to pay for it. This is not some little tramp, you know, with nobody to look out for. This is a lady of breeding and class. I've seen to that. She's gone to all the right schools. She knows the right people. She wears the best clothes. And you've and done a great job. She's a fine lady. Yes. She is. Too fine to end up shacked up with some artistic type, huh? Look, first of all, there's no shacking up going on, but even There's not gonna be any shacking up either, is there? Because you are gonna stay away from my daughter, aren't you? She's a grown woman, Sally. You're trying to control her. I am trying to prevent a disaster. Look, I'm a little sick of this character assassination crap. Can you keep it polite, Nick? I don't wanna have to fire you, but I can, you know. Well, go ahead. But it won't get me out of town, and it'll cost you a bundle. We have a contract, remember? Just what are your intentions towards my daughter? I have no intentions. That's what I thought. Just get her into bed, and then when you're bored, toss her out on the street. Is that right? Oh, you really believe the best of me, don't you? I know your lifestyle. I know the type. I've had men like you in my life before. No sense of responsibility, no moral fabric. But you don't you know me, Sally. Mick? I don't want you messing up my daughter's life. I got plans for her. Oh, yeah? What plans? They don't include you. This is amazing. It sounds like some kind of prearranged marriage. Who is it? Some spoiled kid from Beverly Hills? Look, I think we've both said just about enough. Just keep in mind what I said. I want you to stay away from my daughter, because if you don't, I will see to it that you regret it one way or another. I will see to it that you regret it. Goodbye, Mr. Savage.
evidently, thanks to my father, you already know what my plans are regarding my marriage. Not really. Well, I went to a divorce attorney, Stephanie. I think that speaks for itself. Are you actually going to file for divorce? I didn't go to see him about a will. How did Thorne react when you told him you were going to file? You were taking a walk. Is it okay if I don't? Yeah, sure. Look, Logan, I know this is driving you nuts. I'm just worried about you, Rich. I've never seen you this way. I've never had to deal with anything like this. Is there anything I can do to help? <sighs> Silly question, I know. Brooke, this is something I have to see through by myself. Regardless of what I decide to do. So you do have a choice. Oh, yes. Then nobody's trying to force you to do anything. You don't have the slightest idea what I'm talking about. Rich, I'm not trying to get you to tell me. I know. You're just totally torn apart. It's almost like it's a, a matter of life or death. You're not far off. Ridge, what can be so horribly dreadful involving Thorn? Does it involve Caroline as well? I'm sorry. No more questions. Brooke, this involves all of us to some degree. And that's definitely something I have to consider. But this is all relatively incidental compared to... Compared to what? Compared to Thorn and me. And how I'm ever going to come to grips with what I've just learned. Ridge, what is it? What have you just learned about Thorn? Brooke, look, I know you want to help. But believe me when I say it's impossible. This matter has got to be strictly between Thorn and me. And I don't want you discussing it with Thorn, or Caroline, or anyone else for that matter. That's very important. I won't. But what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know, but it's not going to happen at this cabin that much, I'm sure about. Come on, we got to go back to L.A. Answer me. How did Thorne react when you told him? Did he get upset? Did he lose his temper? Did you get into an argument? I would like to know. Stephanie, I didn't tell him. You didn't tell him? Not yet. I guess we could say thank God for small favors. I have every intention of telling Thorne, so don't get your hopes up. Why are you waiting? I better get upstairs before I'm late for work. Has Ridge called? No, why? I was just wondering how they're doing. I'm sure that Ridge and Brooke are having a wonderful time wherever they are. Have everything? Everything except a few more days with you. This isn't the time. No, I guess it isn't. I keep wondering. Go ahead, say it. Of what awaits us when we get back to Los Angeles. I'm afraid, Rich. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. I'm very afraid. So that's what you're waiting for. To see if Ridge marries Brooke. Yes, Stephanie, that is what I'm waiting for. 
but not for the reason that you think. What is the reason? If there's a wedding, I do realize that it would be very disruptive for me to proceed with my divorce at that time. Well, I suppose I should be grateful for that. You don't have to be grateful, Stephanie. I do understand. And if there is no wedding? Then I'm going to separate from Thorne and file for a divorce. Well, all I can tell you is I hope that they have gone away to set the wedding date. Well, I don't think they have. And I promise you, Stephanie, if they haven't left town to set a wedding date, then the moment that they return, I am definitely telling Thorne. And those are words that I do intend to live by. 